Sometimes it's difficult to show objectively the rate at which Elon Musk's SpaceX makes progress. The advancements we're seeing at the company's Starbase site in South Texas are unprecedented. Like, seriously unprecedented. Especially on the way to orbit, the company's now making the final changes on Starship for the first orbital flight. What are those changes? Why did Musk do it? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech Channel. First of all, let's begin with Thermal Protection Systems, or TPS. While SpaceX's fleet of Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets are partially reusable, Musk's goal is to make Starship fully reusable, a rocket that's more akin to a commercial airplane. One important piece of making Starship fully reusable is improving its durability to survive the intense process of re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. Small hexagonal heat shield tiles are SpaceX's answer to that problem, with the previously shiny Starship 24 rocket now covered in thousands of tiles. The ship is covered entirely with heat tiles. Trailing edges would be needed on the parts of the hull next to the flaps as plasma would spill over the flaps along the hull. The heat shield goes around the nose similar to what was present on a space shuttle. But as you know, after some test, many of the tiles fell off, so SpaceX is trying to fix this and fill the gaps in Ship 24's heat shield. Previously, SpaceX also moved Raptor heat shield components and a missing cover for one of Ship 24's four flaps to the pad since the incident. Most of that work can be classified as finishing touches, and none of it would be prioritized if Ship 24 was not in decent shape. The next improvement is the design of Starship's forward flaps. Beyond a space shuttle-style heat shield of blankets and ceramic tiles, the Starship upper stage is meant to achieve that reusability by descending through the atmosphere and landing unlike any other spacecraft, plane, or rocket ever flown. Instead of flying, guiding, or knifing through the atmosphere nose or tail first, Starship free falls perpendicular to the ground for the last few dozen kilometers or 10 to 20 miles before aggressively flipping into a vertical orientation at the last second and landing propulsively on its tail. Now, according to Elon Musk, two of the four flaps that largely make that exotic maneuver possible are set for a small but significant redesign. Casper Rocket, Stanley Creative, has provided a render of what Musk was trying to say or explain with the nose flaps having moved further toward the top and they're apart by about 120 degrees. The Multitech CEO said probably slightly further forward, smaller, more inward, no funny looking static arrow at top and a static arrow are no longer directly in flow. Apparently those relatively minor changes mean that a portion of Starship's forward flaps will no longer be directly subjected to re-entry heating, potentially allowing SpaceX to entirely remove static aero covers that wrap around the ship's flaps to prevent superheated plasma and gas from reaching sensitive components. Ship 24 is the first prototype that sports the new flap design. Next, SpaceX has just upgraded Starship noses and domes for easier assembly. In a long time, something like 120 complex vertical welds would be needed just to assemble the most basic structure of the nose, followed by four or five no less complex circumferential welds to turn those sections into one cone. But SpaceX's upgraded design now seeks to simplify that process, mainly by increasing the size of the gores. Aside from modestly reducing the number of longitudinal sections needed to form the cone, SpaceX has also reduced the number of stack sections from five to two, slashing the total number of gores needed by at least a factor of two or three. While not quite substantial, the same simplification also reduces the length of vertical and circumferential welds needed to assemble a nose cone. The spirit behind SpaceX's new dome design appears to be a very similar, presumably doubling down on the stretch-forming production method developed for nose cone gores. SpaceX also decided to increase the size of dome gores and reduce the number of stack sections required for dome assembly, albeit from three to two instead of five to two. Besides starting with S24, which is likely the next ship SpaceX will complete, the methane fuel header tank will be relocated from Starship's common dome to its nose cone. From the start, Starship's oxygen header tank has been located at the very tip of the nose, placed in such an inconvenient location for the sole purpose of shifting Starship center of gravity forward. Now the methane header tank will join it in the nose, with the obvious explanation being a need to shift that center of gravity even further forward. It's possible that this change was planned before SpaceX realized the performance benefits of a stretched nine-engine Starship, 
but it could also be a preemptive modification meant to counteract the added weight of three more Raptor engines and longer tanks. Interestingly, for the first orbital flight, SpaceX outfits Starship prototypes with unique Starlink satellite dispensers. When it comes online, Starship will be the biggest and most powerful space transportation system ever built. SpaceX is developing the vehicle to take people and cargo to the Moon and Mars and to perform a variety of other spaceflight tasks, including deploying the next-gen version of its Starlink Internet satellites. There is a satellite deployment adapter on Starship's nose cone. That's a cylinder measuring around 9 meters by 9 meters, which is around 30 feet by 30 feet. Based on its apparent dimension, the frame extends anywhere from 10 to 15 meters or 30 to 50 feet up into Ship 24's nose cone before the diameter would get too narrow for it to continue. On September 15th, the SpaceX team worked on Starship 24's Starlink Pez door frame this morning. Looks like they're adding reinforcement metal around the edges, but could be something else. Another important improvement on Ship 24 is the Raptor engine. Like Ship 20, Ship 24 will eventually be outfitted with three smaller sea-level optimized Raptors and three larger vacuum-optimized Raptors. However, Ship 24 will be the first Starship to use the new Raptor 2 engines, which are capable of generating about 25% more thrust. At full throttle, Ship 24 could theoretically produce almost 1,400 tons or around 3.1 million foot-pounds of thrust at sea level, just shy of twice the thrust of an entire Falcon 9 booster. The Starship will be the most powerful orbital spacecraft in history. Besides, Raptor 2 has a far cleaner appearance than Raptor 1, due to the removal of a huge amount of piping. Raptor 2 also has a bigger throat, which reduces the area ratio, resulting in a three-second fall in specific impulse, but a considerable gain in thrust. Despite the lower ISP, this permits booster engines to be more efficient because gravity losses are reduced. Raptor 2 will reach 230 tons of thrust at 298 bar main combustion chamber pressure, once again, SpaceX is changing the game. Raptor 2 could help enable SpaceX's crewed mission to Mars, expected sometime this decade. These engines are doing things that no other has. Elon Musk has repeatedly said that he wants to be the pioneer who first successfully landed astronauts on the Red Planet. That will be a huge accomplishment for mankind. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section your support's motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.